Um, are you all ready to share the scriptures together this morning? Yes. Amen. And, and are you ready for the word of God to change you? Yes. Amen. Okay, that's, what, that's why we're here today. Let's go straight to the scriptures in Ephesians 6, 16. When it's on the board, there we go. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Let's read it again. In all circumstances, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Then back several verses before that, when we talk about the, the armor of God, Paul tells the church in Ephesus, he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Let me tell you all something you probably already know. The devil wants to burn you up. He wants you to burn with him. You understand? He wants to burn you up now. He wants to shoot darts into you, arrows into you to destroy everything you are, everything you know, everything you've built, everything you've touched. The devil wants to burn you up. He wants you upset. He wants you frustrated. You know, it just amazes me when we, we talk about the anger and being mad. If, if somebody makes you mad, what do you say? That just burns me up, right? I don't think this is a mistake. The words ring true. The devil wants to burn you up. He wants you to be mad. He wants you to be angry because he knows what that does in a group of people. And anger and our attitudes when we're upset, when we're mad, when we're... <clears throat> You've been there, haven't you? I've been there. In your homes, in your jobs, in your work, in your communities, in your church, the devil wants to burn you up. Today we're going to talk about this scripture because I believe Paul has given us revealed word from the Holy Spirit that says this is how you put out the fire. You can't stop the devil from shooting fiery darts at you, but you can handle what you do with it and how long you let it sit there and what you let it do in your life or what you extinguish. Paul says it's with which who can extinguish? You, you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. We're going to have several verses here in Ephesians. Um, Ephesians 4.26 says, Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to who? The devil. We're all going to get angry. That's just a natural response through offense that happens to you. If somebody steps on your toe, do you say, Well, bless you, Lord. I mean, come on, I mean, what do you do? You holler, you scream. Sometimes you say words that don't necessarily always come out of your mouth. Let's just be honest. That's just what happens. And, and we get angry. And he's, Paul's not saying don't ever get angry because you can't, you can get better at how quickly you get angry, but you can quickly learn to do something with it. He says, be angry, but don't sin because anger and the attitudes that we have and the <clears throat> burn you up can just completely take on a whole new dynamic when it's dealing with other people. It's the opportunity to destroy everything you've built, everything you've been, everything where you live, where you work. It's not just a physical burn. There's a mental burning and there's a spiritual burning this warfare is not just physical it is spiritual it is mental it is emotional and I'm going to tell you 
anytime we get angry and we stay angry and we don't deal with it by the end of the day, it just doesn't go away. Those of you who are married and you go to bed angry, don't you just wake up the next morning bright and bushy tail, hi, honey. I don't know, maybe that's how it happens in your house. That's not how it happens in mine. You don't just go to bed angry. There's a reason for that. You've got to learn to deal with it. You've got to deal with it. You've got to deal with it. You've got to control it. You've got to come to some kind of discussion. And I know you won't always see eye to eye on everything, but deal with it. Deal with it then. Don't let it keep continuing. The same thing's true with relationships. You're going to be upset at your friends. You're going to be upset sometime at your very best friends because they're going to do things. They're going to say things that just... There you go. It just burns you up. And so you've got one or two choices. You just leave them behind or you go find a new friend or you deal with it. I believe Scripture's wanting us to deal with it. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such is good for building up as fits the occasion so that it gives grace to those who hear. See, the, the fires are spread by our mouths. It's not just by our attitudes, it's by our mouths, the things we say. James talks about how gossip and malice is like setting a small fire in a forest. And before you know it, the whole forest is ablaze because people won't put it out. You, can control, you can't control gossip coming to you, but you can control what you do with it. You can stop it. You can say, brother, thank you for letting me know, but have you gone and talked to the person who had that offense? Now, there's ways to deal with those type of things, of, of these type of corrupting talk that comes out of our mouth. The problem is it doesn't just stay with you. Is it, it's contagious. It spreads. Look here in Ephesians 4, 30 through 31. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, that puts a whole new slant on it. Our, the, the talk, the, the bad talk when we're burned up doesn't just grieve each other and our friends and the people we know and our families, but it's actually grieving the Spirit of God. It says, and don't grieve the Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, which would be quarreling and slander, be put away from you along with all malice. Nothing good comes from bitterness. Nothing good comes from the quarreling with wrath. Nothing good comes from anger. I remember talking to a, a fellow one time who was posting really angry things on Facebook and putting kind of a religious spin on it. And he said, well, I'm like John the Baptist. I'm laying it to him. And I'm like Jesus throwing over the, the tables. You know, people need to know that God is angry. I, I think he's just completely missed the boat. I believe that kind of behavior grieves the Holy Spirit. And he can't do his work in us because we're just part of the fire. We've just become part of the fire. And these arrows, these darts, these, these darts were like the shafts. They were, they were like an arrow, and they would get a flammable cloth and wrap it around the tip of it. Y'all seen them on TV, on all the, the movies. They have a lot of them where you have the archer, and they set it, and, and they shoot that arrow, and it lobs in and lands on the thatch house, and the house burns up. Or you see them where they have the shields and they're trying to protect themselves. The, the fiery darts were not just the kill shots. They were the chaos and confusion shots. Those were the things that when a, a fiery dart hits you, you've got to do something with it so you take your mind off of the fight because you've got to deal with the fire. And the truth is, a lot of times we become unfocused Christians because we're spending all of our time going around putting out fires. This is popping up here, and that's popping up there, and we just go from fire to fire to fire trying to bring the, the calm back to our world. Folks, we're living in a warfare. 
we're living in a battle. Now, Jesus has won the war. We know that. But we are still living in warfare. Are you? If you're not living in warfare, then something's wrong. You're in warfare. You are in spiritual warfare. And the devil at all times is trying to take his fiery darts to hit you and distract you. He, there's nothing fair about it. All he wants to do is take advantage of you and to take advantage of your anger and take advantage of your emotions. And when this happens, it hurts the church. It affects you, it affects the church. Do you understand that? When it affects you, it affects the church. When you're on fire, it affects the church because we operate as a group, as a unit, as a body. And everything that hurts you hurts the church. And we've got those obligations to each other to heal those wounds, to take care of those wounds, to fix those wounds. But how do we do it? Now, we know the devil's got a, a strategy. It's already said that there in the scripture. The devil's got schemes. He's got plans. He's got ways of doing it. And he's been doing it for a long, long time. He knows human beings. He knows where, we're, where we are vulnerable. So what's your plan? I'm just going to kind of slide on by. I hope, hope he's not going to hit me. Maybe if I just keep my head low, I won't take the arrows. I won't take the wounds. So I don't want to do too much because if I do too much, maybe I'll get the devil's attention and he'll be shooting at me. Can you imagine that kind of being, being that kind of a soldier on the battlefield? Is that the kind of soldier you would want to rely on? I just want to make sure I stay out of the way. I don't know about you, but I want somebody in a, in a soldier in a fight who says, I am here to fight with you. Is that the kind of person you want? I want us to look at each other. I want us to look at each other. I'll tell you what, I want somebody like Arlen fighting with me. I want somebody like Buddy Cash. I want him standing next to me saying, David, you can do it. Do not give up. The enemy is after you, and they've got to be right there. And so the strategy, the strategy is right here in Ephesians 6.10. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. We think of you know, those, those little bitty shields that people would wear on their arms, these little shields. Those were personal shields. Those were single battle shields when you are battling one-on-one -on -one with the enemy and you've got your sword or your javelin and you've got a personal shield. This is a different type of shield that Paul is talking about. It's a completely different Greek word. It's a word that uses the Greek, word, the Greek base word door. Door. These were door shields. These were shields that are four foot tall, two and a half foot tall, wide and on top of them they would have a metal rim and they would have a metal spine and, and so that when a, a sword is hitting on the top of it it hits a piece of metal and they've got a handle there in the middle and those shields are like a door they're curved a little bit and they're almost three inches thick like plywood three layers of wood glued to each other and bound together by rawhide and painted with the color of the enemy. These were not individual fighting shields. These were group shields. And the person who carried this kind of shield worked as a unit with his army. And when they came upon the enemy or the enemy approached them, they did not stand away from each other. They didn't scatter all over the room like we're scattered here. I mean, they were packed in like sardines. They, I mean, I'm telling you, if, if, if the army was coming and y'all were all shoulders with swords and you had your shield, the door shields, y'all would all be in the center aisles. <laughs> I'm going to get you there eventually. So... And that's where they would be, and they would get right next to each other and almost interlocking with each other. And if somebody starts failing, the other takes the place. And there would be this line of people. If you can imagine, just imagine these big door shields, 
and these soldiers with the metal helmets on, and they've got, they've got hold of the shield, and they're even bracing it with their shoulder. They're waiting for the attack to come. And it's like the enemy's coming up against a wall of people. And then you've got a wall on the side. And then there are other people who have these walls who are standing back behind that front line. And what are they doing with their shields? They're holding them up, up, on the, up, up in the air. Because some folks um, are smart enough, if they can't go straight through you, they're going to go over you. And they say these units of Roman soldiers were like, they called it the tortoise formation. And it was like a shell. And that shell of protection was to keep the arrows from penetrating and going through those shields and hitting the men who were behind those shields. They fought as a unit. They moved as a unit, and they would slowly move. They would slowly move, and they've got the shields. They've got protection. And any time somebody breaks rank, it is now making all the rest of the group vulnerable to attack. Every person who had a shield had a purpose and had a reason for being exactly where they were. That's the image that Paul is speaking to this church in Ephesians. Take up, take up the shield, the door of faith, and put it in front of you by which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one that come. And you deal with it. And if that flaming dart hits that shield, you get your, your sword and you, you whack it. And it's been extinguished. It's gone. Because it, it maybe, it's the, maybe it's the arrow that's stuck in your neighbors. Get the, get the sword, cut it off. Extinguish it right then. It's not just your shield that's at risk. It's your neighbor's shield that's being shot. Each and every one of us are in that position. He says, this is, this is the strategy, church. Take up the shield of faith. Can you all see that? Can you see? I was going to make you stand here and do it, but I didn't think that would take a lot of time and somebody would grump about it. So I decided not to do that. But I want you to imagine in your own mind's eye a group of, of men with shields right here in front of you, and they are close together. It is shield upon shield. And right behind them you have other people who are holding shields up like this to protect them from different angles because the enemy does not always come to you from straight on, does he? He comes from different angles. And he'll try this way this time and you're standing strong and he's going to come from a different direction next time. It's because he knows the schemes. And if he knows he can get you focused going only that direction and protecting yourself and only worried about yourself, he knows if you can break ranks and you go out there and you try to handle it on your own, then he's got you. There's nothing more dangerous than a believer who leaves the ranks. You don't have to be, you don't have to be in this church but you've got to be in a church. You've got to be a part of a body. You've got to be a part of a body. You can only stand there with a personal small little shield for so long. You can only fight for so long. You've got to have the unit. You've got to have the protection. You've got to have the protection of the body. That's why we're here. In all circumstances, in all circumstances, you don't wait for the battle to start you start before the battle you get ready now you get ready now in all circumstances take up the shield of faith because you've got to be in position so what is this shield of faith I mean, what is it? I, it's, it's the things you know from Scripture and from your relationship with God that you know to be true. And you will rely upon it because you know it to be true. You have faith. You believe. You know that God's promises are true. You have the Scriptures that tell you it's true. And no matter what happens out there, you stand on that promise. You stand on the promise of who God is and what God is and how he will protect you and how he will shield you. 
You know, Jesus did exactly the same thing when, when he was tempted. Y'all, y'all remember he went through the first temptations. He's, he's tempted by the devil to turn this stone into bread. And he does, and he does what? Jesus quotes scripture right back to him. Man shall not live by bread alone. But the devil, see, then came from a different angle. This very next time says, tell you what, let me take you up and show you all the kingdoms of the world, Jesus. I want to show you all the kingdoms of the world. And and, and Jesus just turns right around because the devil wanted him to worship him and says, if you'll just worship me, you can have all this stuff. And Jesus fires right back with a scripture that he knows to be true because he's the author of it and says, you shall worship the Lord God and him only. The third one says, why don't you just throw yourself down off of the, off the temple and your angels will catch you trying to get them to do a, a show, to do a, a trick, to test them. And Jesus fires right back, says, do not tempt. It is, it is written, do not, you shall not tempt, test the Lord your God. See, every dart, every attack of the evil one, every bad thing that happens to you and in your world and your circumstances is not just a bad event, a hurt, a pain. It is also a temptation. It's a temptation for you to walk away from God. It's a temptation for you to say, he's not able to protect me. It's a temptation for you in your moments of frustration and of your hurt and of your pain to give up. To say God is not able. But I'm going to tell you, every every fiery dart, every wound, every attack from the devil, it's just a, it's just a, a temptation which calls you and asks you to cast doubt on who God is. In all circumstances, Take up. Take up. You've got, to, you've got to take it. You've got to take it. Your mama cannot give it to you. Your daddy cannot give it to you. Your kids cannot give it to you. You have to take it. You have to take it up. And, and there's going to be an attack that comes to you, and that attack is going to be a lie that's in your voice that God does not care about you because of the bad thing that happened in your circumstance and you take up that shield of faith and you say, I know my God is good because that's what the scriptures say. And then another dart comes and says, and it whispers in your voice and you feel like this and in your spirit you just say, I'm all alone. Well, take up the shield. Because the scripture says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And you take up that shield of faith when the, your past gets being brought back up by the devil and says, you are no, do you know who you are? Do these people in this church know what kind of man you were? What kind of woman you were? You take up the shield of faith. You take it up. You say his mercy endures forever. Yeah. His mercy, devil, his mercy endures forever. The devil's not going to be through with you because he's going to attack you and he's going to keep attacking. He's going to keep attacking you and your family, your health, your finances, everything about you. He's going to try to set on fire and you're going to think my faith is just too weak. Well, take up the shield of faith and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You all see what the shield, the shield of faith is not just your mental thinking, saying, I'm just going to think my way through this. I'm going to be so mentally tough that I can do this. It is not your strength. It is his strength based upon the word of God. That is the shield of faith. That is the shield of faith that we hold on to. And you think, I've been doing this too long. I'm too tired. And the scriptures say, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as evil. I mean, as eagles, not as evil, as eagles. They shall mount up with strength, and I'm an eagle. I'm going to do this because I carry the shield of faith. And I'm standing by people who carry the shield of faith. And we together will be a unit of people. And we will come across people who've lost all hope. And you can tell them for nothing. 
For nothing is impossible with God. You all see what the shield of faith does? It's just taking and appropriating the promises that Jesus has given to us through the scriptures if we'll just pick them up and claim them. I'm sick. Yes, you are. You are my healer. (laughs) Others want to destroy you. And some may. And they tried to to destroy Jesus. And Jesus took up the shield of faith and said, Father, forgive them. (laughs) They don't know what they're doing. Ephesians 4, 32. It says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as Christ and Jesus forgave you. That takes the shield of faith. Because without my shield, I'm not forgiving you. You hurt me. And you know what? As Jacob, my son, would say, Jacob, my youngest, say, and you did it on purpose. <laughs> you know, the Pharisees put Jesus on a cross on purpose. But Jesus holding the word of God to say, Father, because he was the word. Father, forgive them. They don't know what to do. See, Jesus gives us a better strategy. He gives us a better strategy because he gives us a better weapon. He gives us a shield. You think I have no protection and the word says, I am your shield. I am your defender. I am your protector. See, it's the shield of faith that neutralizes the flame. It neutralizes the flame. It stops the flame. But it only stops the flame if I'm holding and taking up the shield of faith. I hope you'll let me give just a few more examples of people in the Bible who did this. Y'all remember the stories about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were in in Babylon, and and Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fiery furnace. (laughs) And he was expecting them to burn up. And they told him before he was thrown in there, it says, the God we serve is able to deliver us. The God you serve is able to deliver you. And even if he does not, even if he does not, we will not serve your gods. What faith. And when they looked in the fire, there were four of them, not three. Because the fourth one looked like a son of God who was standing there with them in the fire. You going through a fire? You speak out the words of faith. You speak out the words of faith. My God, I know you will deliver me, but even if you do not, I will trust you. Because this world is not all there is. This is the beginning of a whole eternity. Job. Going through, if, can you think of anybody who took more shots than Job? Anybody who took more shots than Job? And he said, Lord, even if you slay me, even if you slay me, I will trust you. Paul prays for relief from the thorn of his flesh. And God speaks to him and says to his, to his heart, says, my grace is sufficient for you. And when any time your request seems it doesn't have any answer, we turn and we take the shield of faith, says, Father, not my will, but your will be done. I may not understand I may not understand, God, what you're doing, but I'm going to tell you, if we take the shield of faith, that shield of faith says, all things work together for good to those who are called by him according to his purpose. But I'm afraid. I'll tell you, every man who's standing there in that unit formation is afraid. If they say they're not afraid, they're lying. They're afraid. Every single one of them are afraid because their life is on the line. They're not just afraid for themselves. They're afraid for their 
fellow soldiers and they're afraid for their families because they may feel like they are the last defense. They know what's at stake here. Warfare is frightening. They are afraid. You can take up the shield of faith and say, though I walk through the shadow or the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil for you are with me. I know the Christian walk is not easy. I know the shield gets heavy. But you don't have to carry this alone. You don't have to fight this alone. I want us to look for people outside of our shields because they are weary and they are getting whipped. And we need to be telling them, come within the shield of faith. Join us. This is a place where you can be protected. This is a place where you can get some hope and where you can get some healing. Do you all agree with me? Is this a place of hope? Is this a place of healing? And it's not because we're great people, and most of you are. <laughs> all of you are. All of you are. All of you are wonderful. I'm glad you all are listening. All of you are wonderful, but we, we're not perfect. We, but, but I tell you what we do have is we've got a shield of faith. And if you'll come in here behind me and work with me, I've got people here who will protect you. And you may be wounded right now, and you, need, you just need a place where you can stop and take a break and take a breath and say, I just need some help here. Well, come on in within the shield. Come on in within the formation, and we'll protect you, and we'll love you, and we'll minister to you, and, and God will heal you. Guys, there are people out there who are needing our help. It's time for us to start reaching them. It's start time for us to start reaching them and being part of their lives and bringing them here. The last thing I want to tell you is one thing we can do is fight fire with fire. They do that in firefighting. They start a fire before a fire ever gets to you so everything there will be consumed. You want to fight fire with fire? Then you get the fire of the Holy Spirit working in your life. You want to fight fire with fire before the enemy ever gets to you. Everything around you is consumed through the power of the Holy Spirit. And there is nothing left to ignite around you because everything, everything, everything is under the protection of the Holy Spirit. And if we will walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you what, it gives us a whole lot better odds. You may feel like you can go do it on your own and you don't have to be a part of a church. But I'm going to tell you your odds are better when you're part of the, the army. Do we have some soldiers here who are willing to stand? I want to ask you all to stand because I want to ask each and every one of you all to stand. I'm not going to make you come forward. and I was going to make you do a formation and make you hold up your bulletin or something like it was a shield, but I decided not to be silly. But I'm going to tell you, I want you to stand by somebody. I want you to hook arms. You are standing here with a shield of faith. You are not alone. You are not alone alone. You will never be alone as long as you have soldiers for Christ standing there with you who are taking up the shield of faith. Isn't that right? And when, you're, when the person next to you starts getting weak and weird, he, come on, man. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Don't you know they were doing that behind the shield? I mean, they've got these armies pressing up against them, and they're back behind the shield. They're not talking about mama's banana bread. I mean, they're, they're saying, come on, come on, come on. Let's move forward, move forward, move back. And they're working in a unit because they're protecting each other. And if we will stand upon the promises of God, I promise you, your odds are a whole lot better. Your odds are a whole lot better. I'm gonna, I want 
I want you all to pray among each other. Those of you, if it's just two or three of you, y'all pray with each other today. We're not going to have the prayer partners today. You are a prayer partner. You are a partner in faith who's standing there with a shield. And they need you. The people standing next to you need you. Will you do that? Let's pray. Pray with yourself while he gently and softly sings this song. And then I'm going to close it with a word of prayer.